So let's get started. Our topic today is starting X enhancements for edge networking. My name is Kai Lunqing. I'm a software engineer from Intel. And this is Dr. Chen Dan from uh, Senior Director of uh, Edge Computing from China Unicom. Uh, so for today's presentation, I have divided it into six sections. In the first section, I will introduce you what is edge computing and uh, wh why we are talking about edge networking today. And I will also present you uh, the Starting X project, uh, which was open source since the last Vancouver summit. I will also go deep diving into those technology details, uh, especially focusing on the networking enhancements of uh, for the edge. Uh, after that, Dr. Chen Dan will uh, share a business case uh, with the deployment of Starling X in China Unicorn. In the last two sections, I will firstly show you the status of Starling X networking project and uh, share you with our uh, future plan for the edge. So here comes the first question. Uh, what is driving edge computing? As you may already know that the traditional clock meeting has a view of uh, data center centric so that, uh, that means that uh, all your workloads should be run uh, in your data centers. But with uh, the uh, growth of the amount of data and uh, devices, as well as the diversity of your workloads at the edge, uh, the data center-centric view may not uh, meet the, those requirements at the edge. So here comes the, the edge computing. You may, uh, for example, you may need in the autonomous driving use cases that uh, the vehicle codes may need the latency to be less than five milliseconds, so that latency is important. You may also need some other cases that uh, uh, higher bandwidth to ensure that uh, uh, your user experience. Uh, we may also need the data locality for some use cases uh, where the data should be kept uh, private and secure. Last but not least, we also need connectivity and security to be enhanced at the edge. Uh, for example, we mean, uh, the user may, may want to continue their services even when there is very limited network uh, connectivity. And since our uh, smart devices today have more and more data uh, stored and transferred, so uh, an added level of uh, security is also crucial. So uh, as we just presented that edge computing is quite challenging and charming. Uh, it's quite, uh, I mean, demanding and uh, ch charming. There are also some uh, challenges associated with it. For example, we need to uh, improve uh, the service capabilities uh, in the AR and VR applications. We may also need to comply with the data locality when, when, deal with, uh, when dealing with, uh, I mean, healthcare center use cases. We may also need to significantly uh, reduce application latency when in the uh, autonomous driving use cases. So here, why we are talking about edge networking? Because you may already found out that, that the cloud computing driving factors have quite a lot of comments with uh, the networking uh, requirements. For example, latency and bandwidth uh, requires a, a more, uh, more performant and efficient network. And we may also need a remote management of a complex, uh, uh, to, uh, management of complex non-homogeneous networks uh, for the data locality and scalability. Uh, for the connectivity, it needs reliability and autonomous side operations with limited connectivity. And we also need enhanced uh, network security, CAPEX, OPEX, as well as the TTM, not only for edge computing, but also for edge networking. So the networking plays a key role at the edge. This means when we need, if we need, uh, if we want our, uh, I mean, edge infrastructure to land in our real life, we need to firstly fill up those gaps at the edge networking. Uh, so here comes uh, the Starling X project. What is Starling X project and uh, what it is uh, doing to uh, meet those uh, requirements? Uh, the first question is what problems is Starling X solving? Uh, as the data growth is massive. So Starling X is uh, providing uh, enhancement uh, to provide a, a smarter network. The second thing that Starling X is trying to do is to uh, enhance the, uh, to deal with a distributed scenario where the uh, architecture can be different and the manageability can be an issue. The third thing that Starling X is trying to do is to enhance your uh, reliability for your edge site. So think about today, if you need to build up your edge infrastructure, uh, you may need to evaluate, you may need to firstly scope your hardware requirements and evaluate a bunch of uh, uh, software, open source software components, including OpenStack. 
you may pick up OpenStack and do some, uh, uh, do quite a lot of uh, reconfigurations to meet your uh, business requirements. Your, requir uh, your business case may be one of uh, those listed on the right. It can be drone, surveillance, agriculture, and so on. So the intent of starting X project is to provide a packed solution uh, with a, which is a com combination of uh, a bunch of uh, open source components to give the reconfigurability of the proven technology for the edge cloud. It also provides a system-wide orchestration, a uh, simple deployment to geographically di uh, dispersed uh, remote edge regions. It, also, it is also a d deployment ready uh, solution with quite a lot of uh, enhancements, uh, including, uh, including reliability, high availability, and so on. So Starling X is an edge virtualization platform, uh, which is in general composed of two parts. The first part is in the, in the middle. It is a, a combine of uh, some Starling X services. And there, are, uh, there is another part named Upstream Project, which is uh, composed of, uh, firstly, the OpenStack uh, components, including Nova, Neutron, Serva, uh, Cinder, Swift, and so on. And uh, another part uh, of uh, Upstream Project uh, uh, Kubernetes, OVS, DBDK, Libvirt, and so on. So in today's presentation, we are mainly focused on how Starling X is uh, dealing with uh, the network requirement at the edge. As we just said, benefit from the packed solution that Starling X can scale small or large easily. It can have the single, dual, or multiple server deployment to, to meet your uh, hardware uh, constraints and also adapt it to your business cases. So uh, in the next section, let's go deep diving into the technology details of the Starling X networking enhancements. As we said, that the first uh, edge networking requirement is uh, for the performance and efficiency. When we talk about today the network performance, we may think uh, there are two, mo uh, two words that can come up into our mind. One is uh, bandwidth, another one is latency. So for the bandwidth, Starling X is providing node-to-node VM-to-VM high-performance networking by enabling OVS, DBDK, SIOV, and the PCI pass-through. It is also working with OpenStack upstream to uh, enable Smartlink and FPGA, the next generation of hardware acceleration technology. From the latency side, Starling X has done quite a lot of uh, enhancements in KVM to reduce, uh, uh, to provide re real-time and low-latency enhancement. This including uh, the reduce, reduction of uh, variability of uh, interrupt latency as well as for the reduction of uh, high uh, resolution timer latency. So what is different from OpenStack upstream is that Starling X is uh, providing a mission ready network performance uh, by enabling OVS DPDK uh, enabled by default and with all the enhancement in that uh, packed solution. There is another section uh, which will talk about the hardware acceleration technologies tomorrow if you're interested. So Starling X is uh, uh, providing another component named uh, configuration management. It provides the installation and the configuration ability for your edge cloud. It also, it firstly uh, provides the ability of uh, auto discovery of your, new no of your new nodes at the edge site and uh, uh, think about uh, what you need to do if you would like to reach your network performance, your best network performance today. You may need to do uh, quite a lot of uh, uh, reconfigurations of your network uh, parameters. So this component uh, provides uh, the facility of the, those configurations. And uh, the benefit from the uh, system inventory agent deployed on each host, uh, we can do the nodal level configuration including the network interface, uh, huge page numbers and size for, your, for, your, uh, for all your hosts at the edge. It also uh, provides the ability of inventory discovery if your host is associated with uh, the hardware, one of the hardware uh, acceleration technologies like SLV, PCI pass-through or, or, or some others. It can be easily discovered and managed. So the, uh, from the network efficiency side, the Starling X is, enhanced ba is doing enhancement based on OpenStack Neutron to do some uh, uh, enhancement uh, f from several aspects. For example, uh, it, redu uh, it does some uh, bulk operations and uh, removes some away unnecessary operations for L2, L3 uh, scheduling and rescheduling. Uh, for, for L2, L3 agent, it, it introduced uh, event-driven 
uh, sync task uh, to replace the traditional periodic uh, sync task so that your system can be more responsive. So uh, uh, starting X is also doing some uh, concurrency scenario enhancement and uh, by uh, handling some stale RPC messages uh, to uh, reduce uh, the, the number of uh, invalid uh, scheduling operations in your edge cloud. Starting X is also doing, uh, based on L2 population, uh, to introduce a registration mechanism so that some other components like floating IP, BGP, EVPN, to leverage that L2 population technology uh, to, uh, to, re to reduce uh, the ARP messages uh, across all the sites. Starting X is also trying to support VLAN transparent uh, and doing some uh, uh, enhancements in quality of service, BGP, EVPN, service function chain, and so on. So the next requirement that uh, Starting X is uh, uh, trying to, uh, trying to uh, fill is that the remote management of complex and non-homogeneous networks. Uh, so this firstly, Starting X is uh, introducing a host management component uh, which can provide the full lifecycle management of the host via REST API. So the first benefit of this component is that it can detect and automatically handle the failure and initiate recovery of your host. It also supports uh, automated and user-level clust cluster connectivity tests so that uh, your edge operator can easily uh, find where the, the failure is from. It also, it also improves the way uh, the physical network topology uh, is presented to your edge operator. Uh, if you want to know which part of your uh, host are, are connected to which external physical infrastructure. Uh, apart, all these uh, all these provide the improved uh, low t low touch manageability of your edge side, uh, but host management can also do some enhancements uh, for the reliability since it also monitors the processes on your host as well as the resource utilization. So StarnX is also doing another enhancement based on OpenStack Neutron to introduce a network segment range management. So as we just discussed, that uh, in your edge sites that uh, you may want your uh, the, the, I mean, the architecture are different, and uh, you may want the segment range zero to service uh, business zero, uh, segment range n to service uh, business n. So when you, uh, when you would like to do this uh, in uh, the concurrent uh, OpenStack deployment, you will need to uh, interact directly with uh, the host uh, configurations and restart your Neutron server. But with the, the, this feature that uh, uh, StarnX provides, you can manage the underlying segment range via REST API, where you do not need any uh, host, uh, direct host interaction anymore. And it, this also enables full network orchestration. For the cloud uh, administrator, it uh, gives them the privilege to control the segment range globally or on a pertinent basis. So you can assign tenant zero to, connect, uh, to use uh, segment range zero, which will eventually uh, service uh, business zero and you can, can, you can assign tenant one to use the segment range K and N, and so on. As the external physical infrastructure can change their configurations uh, quite uh, frequently at the edge, so StarnX is also providing the scaling of uh, segment range so that to meet your requirements. Uh, the, the, third requ the third thing that StarnX is trying to do is to provide the enhanced reliability and autonomous side operations with limited connectivity. So the StarnX is uh, enhanced based on OpenStack Neutron to provide the L2, L3 rescheduling. Uh, it, uh, today it can support automatic uh, rescheduling of DHCP servers as well the, as the routers uh, from the, the dead L2, L3 agents, from the newly come up agents, or from the agents which are, uh, have the load unbalanced. Here is the example of DHCP server rebalancing. You may see uh, in this illustration that the, the three DHCP agents have, uh, have different loading that some are overloaded but some are almost empty. So StarnX is introducing a, a threshold based algorithm to automatically rebalance your uh, loads of those uh, compute nodes or DHCP agents. Actually, Starting X is also working with Upstream to provide this re uh, rescheduling ability via, re uh, via REST API or via a script uh, approach. 
starting axis also evaluating uh, the redistribution based on an uh, external monitoring system with more information like CPU, memory, and so on. Uh, furthermore, starting X is providing a fault management uh, component, which uh, pro provides a framework for the for the infrastructure services to uh, to report their errors or alarms or events uh, via, via API. And uh, uh, all these uh, alarms and events will be stored in a centralized logging or alarm system. So that and the, this can be managed by the operator via REST API. And uh, all, uh, all the alarm and uh, logs can be platform related. Uh, I mean, these uh, can be physical and uh, can also be virtual resources. And nowadays, Starling X uh, supports uh, the network fault, fault management, including uh, network connectivity, neutron agents, ML2 drivers, BGP peers, and so on. Here is an overview of, of uh, how Starling X is doing with infrastructure, high availability, and orchestration. Uh, with, uh, the, uh, with the components that I've introduced uh, in the previous slides, like fault management, uh, config management, and uh, host management, that starting X is uh, using based on external entity named infrastructure service to manage and orchestrate a VM uh, level uh, high availability and live migration. And uh, furthermore, is that uh, starting X is uh, providing a complete stack which compose which is composed of the controller level failover as well as for the service level monitoring and migration. So the last requirement, add requirement that Starling X is trying to fill up is the enhanced network security. There are quite a lot of um, uh, firewall driver solutions currently available in the upstream. So Starling X is uh, enhanced based on um, OpenStack Neutron to uh, select uh, OVS DPDK firewall driver. And there are some, uh, uh, some solutions which are stateful, some are stateless, some are native, some are non-native. So currently Starling X is using an OpenFlow Plus contract-based uh, OVS DPDK driver. And uh, uh, this is a totally used space and a stateful and native uh, solution. As, uh, Apart from this, Starling X is providing uh, the patching support via software management, uh, which you can update, update your software versions uh, to mitigate some of the network uh, uh, vulnerabilities. So in the next section, I will pass uh, the presentation to Dr. Chen Dan to share, some, share with you some uh, business uh, insights of the, in the uh, China Unicom. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Chen Dan from China Unicom. Uh, before I present the Starling X test results, please allow me to introduce the China Unicom's full stack cloud network architecture and the edge service platform. As we know, with the development and the combination of the SDN, NFA, big data, and artificial intelligence technologies, the 5G network will become the key infrastructure in the digital transformation of all industries. Uh, so the 5G services have the characteristics of lower latency, the l larger bandwidth, and the more extensive connection. The traditional vertical the 4G network has many deficiencies. For example, uh, in the areas of the resource sharing, the agile, the innovation, the flexible expansion, and simple operation and management. So, to effectively meet the service requirement of EMBB, MMTC, and the URRC or 5G network, as well as to enhance the industrial the competitiveness, uh, so almost all the, the global telecom operators have started the network reconstruction and transformation, aiming to establish the DC centered the new network. As shown in this picture, the 5G network of China Unicom will be an elastic network based on the three-layer DC, that is re regional DC, the local DC, the edge DC, which will quickly respond to and shorten the deployment time of new services. Towards 2020 to 2022, China Unicom will construct the 70 to 80 regional DCs, 600 to 700 the local DCs, and more than 6,000 the edge DCs. 
with new the management and the, the business models. As you know, the multi-access and computing technology is the result of the ICT integration. For the uh, telecom, the operators, you know that the tens of thousands of the IDCs may be the best high quality resources compared with the OTT companies such as the Tencent, the Alibaba, Facebook, and so on. Uh, now, China Unicom is committed to building an open iCloud service platform and providing the rich service capabilities and uh, the unified APIs for the application developers aiming to accelerate the incubation and the commercial use of the innovative the 4G network. There are three main characteristics on our platform. The first one is open. We can open the cloud the API. We can open, we can provide the open management API and the open network and application the capabilities, including the LBS, the ANIS, the AI, the queues, the real-time, the transcoding, the cloud rendering, and so on. The second one is agility. We can provide the agile the ice and pass services, as well as agile arbitration and management. So customers can apply for their resources on demand. However, we also we are also facing many challenges in the process of IDDC construction. For example, the specific customized servers and lightweight OpenStack or container are needed for adapting to the bad environment of the telecom OCS offices. But the good news is that we have found that the Style X project could perfectly satisfy the edge requirements of our, of our edge platform. As we know, the Style X project was announced at the last OpenStack Summit in Vancouver and released all the results on the, on the source code officially several days before. So the StarLynx is an iComputing specific cloud management project with many mature, mature and advanced features we need. So China Unicam decided to use the StarLynx as a base of iComputing testing at the first stage. Next, I will go through this addition, this adding services in more details. Uh, this page is talking about the fault management service in StarlingX and it's even the suppression the feature. This part can be mapped to the fault management interface spec, spec of the ETSI MEC document. The left picture is a document piece from the ETS MEC spec and the right side is two snapshots per pictures of StarlingX running web pages. The content inside the red color block as from StarlingX fault management service, which is an enhanced feature comparing to the original OpenStack components. The second step note picture of StarlingX fault management UI is about the, the log event processing result. And uh, this page is about the system configuration service. What is the system management form? The, so the, so the system management is a service uh, to provide many hyper the functions for developer and configuration, and configuration. For example, it can auto discover the new nodes in the edge site, and it can manage the installation and configuration parameters, such as the neutron config, the agent, the parameters, etc. The, the left picture is also the related content from ETS MEC spec, and the right side. Three pictures are the UI pages um, snapshot. That's a very important feature. Uh, that is a very important feature here. That is the provide network topology operation UI, which is the missing features in the up upstream OpenStack, and uh, it's very helpful for the deployment automation in edge scenarios. And meanwhile, the UI can show many the low level details of natural NICs as well. Here is the virtual motion HA management and acceleration. This is the validation test in China Unicamp's iCloud laboratory. By killing host the nodes manually to trigger the operations of automatic live migration. Currently, the, the testing results are very good. We can see the live migration time of the regular the, the, the CentOS VM um, may, uh, need about uh, only the 13 seconds. The bottom right picture is going to show the source code, the state of, of this module. It is written by the C++. 
with, with, with high the efficiency. Um, in this slide, the controller HA, the optimization is also very critical for ad computing. Though it is not part of the ETS MEC spec, Synlex has three kinds of deployment to the scale, the single node, the dual nodes, and the multiple nodes. The controller HA feature is to focus on the dual node deployment. The right side pictures are showing the test results in our lab. Uh, the first test is to stop one controller node computer service manually. Then it can be restarted after one second. The, the second test is to disable it instead, and it needs 15 seconds to be restarted. If we show down one controller node and restart it again, most of the controller services can be restarted, but with only one exception, that is a neutron service, which is a gap currently. Uh, in this page, the inventory, the management is also not part of the ETSMEC document, but it's very important for the ad computing cloud. This type of detailed information can be collected by the StanLX for higher layer software. The first one is DPDK. Since more natural, the, the interfaces, the parameters. The second one is the language of the physical, the NICs. The third one is the hardware acceleration devices, such as the SRLV, the SmartNIC, and so on. Um, so, and the strongest support from the Intel and the Nanan Cloud, we had, we had run a full validation on StarLX in the past six months. The StarLX can improve the efficiency on the high availability in both VM and controller level. It can also optimize the required nodes number to fit at the uh, to fit the to fit uh, ad deployment scenarios. Besides, the features are added in fault management, the rolling, the upgrading, the inventory, discovering, and the VNF acceleration, which are the interface recommended by the ETSI spec. So the StarlingX can provide the capabilities in VM applications and the VNF hostings. It can also be extended to support the containerized the applications in the future. It is so StarlingX is one of the top strategies for Chain Unicam to build an open the ad platform to provide open interfaces to support the ecosystem applications the hosting and avoid the avoid the vendor locking. Uh, it is an open the infrastructure te um, technology for ad computing, so StarlingX will play an essential role in Chain Unicam's the ad strategy. So the next session uh, back to Kalun. So let's talk about a little bit about uh, how Starling X is cooperating with uh, OpenStack upstream. You may have some confusions that uh, Star Starling X uh, uh, have quite a lot of uh, components that are uh, that are in common with uh, OpenStack upstream. So actually, the Starling X upstream is uh, composed of two parts. The first one is uh, the OpenStack related components, including Nova, Neutron. Cinder, Swift, and so on. And there is another part, which are the uh, open source blocks, including Kubernetes, OVS, DBDK, Libvirt, KVM, and so on. So Starling X has defined a w upstream workflow, which makes uh, uh, them to analyze, uh, firstly, the, their legacy patches in those staging repos, and send the reports to the upstream community to review with them. This will decide the direction of the, how these legacy patches enhancements will be will be trick, will be dealt with. Dealt with. Uh, they will be either be uh, adopted, be rebased, be capped, or be upstream. If they are decided to be upstream, they will we will work with uh, the upstream OpenStack uh, uh, OpenStack projects, for example, uh, to write up the specifications, uh, bug fixings, or uh, patches to have them merged into those uh, upstream projects like OpenStack. So the eventual, uh, eventual uh, target of uh, starting X upstreaming is to align with upstream. This means there will be no uh, zero patch in the staging repos of all the staging repos, including STX, Neutron, Nova, uh, etc. And starting X will update to OpenStack staying for the starting X uh, July 2019 release. This is the progress of Starling X networking project. Uh, we have around uh, 150 patches in Neutron and Neutron Lib, and uh, we have divided, into, divided them into 18 functions, including uh, QS, DHCP, and so on. And currently, we have seven blueprints reviewed in the PTG session, and uh, one under development per the uh, alignment with the OpenStack community. 
we have some others uh, enhancements and bug fixes uh, already merged or being revealed. So from the downstream side, Starting X is continuing to do some uh, enhancements uh, uh, for the edge, uh, like OVS DBD driver we've just mentioned, as well as for the vSwitch configurability uh, DP support, and uh, RX uh, multi-queue affinity support, and so on. On the other side, Starting X is trying to support uh, the containerized OpenStack services to fill up the gaps there with uh, the Kubernetes deployment of OpenStack services. And uh, Starting X networking is also enabling the vSwitch functions based on nodal labels. So let's, about a little bit, let's talk a little bit about our future plan for the edge. As Starling X is uh, targeting uh, the container architecture for the next generation, uh, so uh, Starling X networking firstly need to support that container architecture uh, by two means. The first one is uh, to support the containerized services to fill up the gaps in OpenStack Helm to support OVS DBDK. The other one is to support the containerized VNF. We can see CNF uh, in that uh, architecture to have the accelerated network performance uh, uh, hardware features to be enabled in the containers. We also need to fill up the gaps uh, in, uh, I mean, in uh, the containers support of multi-tenancy and multi-interface. We are also evalu evaluating the service function chain in the containers. On the other side, starting X is uh, doing some enhancements for the edge, uh, like uh, time-sensitive networking and uh, network edge virtualization SDK integration. And Starling X is also doing some high-level integration with uh, the orchestration system like ONAP, Open Networking Automation uh, Platform, to have a high-level orchestration system to take control over this uh, Starling X. This means to take control over your edge site. I think that's all for our presentation. Uh, I'm glad to uh, answer one of your questions. So um, within the Starling X project, you had a number of uh, different parts. Will it be possible to use some of those parts but not the whole system on top of an OpenStack cloud? I'm thinking of things like the configuration management or the host availability. Uh, the question, uh, the answer to the question, I think, is yes, for sure. But uh, as you know, as I've just presented, that uh, one of the benefits that Starling X project is providing is to provide that uh, a packed solution but in the future, uh, there will be uh, only the Starling X services uh, in, uh, in the Starling X project with no, uh, I mean, no other staging repos like uh, Neutron, Nova, STX, Neutron, STX, Nova, et cetera. So you can pick up any of the Starling X service like a configuration management or fault management or host management with one of your, uh, one of your, uh, one of your edge infrastructure but you cannot expect all the functionalities should be work well. Uh, things you may miss up some of the, the other uh, external entity, for example, infrastructure service to uh, to handle those. Uh, I mean, orchestration or allow migration. You can pick up some of them to. I mean, to uh, meet your use cases. Okay, any other questions? Uh, I have a simple question. Which specific user case are you looking at in China Unicom? Okay, I would like to Dr. Shenan to answer that question. Oh, sorry. Which specific use case are you looking at? Our specific use case. Uh, <clears throat> You know, in the 2020 and uh, China Unicom have, have deployed the, uh, the pilots, the large scale pilots in 15 uh, China provinces, uh, including Beijing, Shanghai, Shenzhen, uh, Tianjin, and so on. Uh, so the scenarios uh, include uh, such as the uh, HD video, uh, the cloud gaming, and uh, the stadium, uh, and uh, the water project, the smart city, and the smart ag agri uh, agriculture, and, uh, and uh, the, uh, maybe the, uh, uh, the spot, the spot the venue, uh, and so on. Um, so that's it. <laughs> so man, and we have, uh, this year we deployed the uh, 30,000 trials in 15 the provinces. Uh, 
if you are interested in it, uh, maybe we can chat uh, back to China. <laughs> okay. That's all. Okay. Thank you.